somebody recently asked me what is film studies which is a perfectly relevant question if you're going to sit around on YouTube and talk about film studies all the time um, well typically something like film studies is something studied at a university which essentially means a place of authority a place where questions of methodology have been hashed out and continue to be hashed out and often you know what when we call something a field of study, like film studies, literary studies, art history, uh, sociology, and so on, we're talking about a certain set of objectives we have, which is namely to bring the diversity of what seems to belong to those different fields or what can be uh, described by those fields into some kind of sense or order. So, you know, we can draw connections between them and not just for any old reasons, but these connections we draw should be productive so that we can do something with them. It should never really be about just gathering knowledge for the sake of gathering knowledge, which is obviously a pleasurable thing to do, and uh, more people should do it, but it should also be about accumulating knowledge in order to think in new ways, and ideally to create in new ways and interact in new ways with the world. And that's at a ma macroscopic level. Um, the obvious thing here is that film studies should also deepen our appreciation of watching film itself. Um, there's an argument some people have which is to say that they don't want to study something because it will destroy the mystery of it. Um, and to a certain extent that's true. I think that uh, if you think about magic tricks, for many people, if they know how the trick is done, if they've somehow come to understand the mystery either because the magician made a mistake or they went and read a book about it, then the illusion has lost its appeal. But I would argue that that's not really the case with studying film, or it would rarely be the case. Because when we study something like film, which certainly does involve a lot of trickery and illusion, you know, seeing through those illusions not only deepens our appreciation of how the films are made from a technical standpoint, but we get to see something about how film works on our minds and how film can shape our behaviors. So there's at least two things going on in film studies. First, film studies can deal with the film as an object, which means thinking about individual films as collections of little bits of film, little shots and sequences that are pieced together after hundreds and sometimes literally thousands of people have worked on producing the material that gets edited down into a 90 or 120 minute sequence. And that's not to mention the people who work on the sound or in the post-production process or the people who write the scripts before uh, a single frame is shot and not to mention the people who copy and distribute the films and send them to theaters nor the theaters themselves and the dvd rental outlets and now we have things like netflix and so forth in a way these things the means of production the means of uh, distribution, the means of exhibition, these are all related to the film as an object, as a material thing that can be produced by material means, or a digital asset that can be created through digital means as well. Um, that's what we mean by film studies, is to think about that real sense in which it's an object that exists in in human society, human human interactions is produced out of things that people do together by interacting with the world and it's an economic entity something that can be bought or shared um, then the second thing here I mean there's many other things but uh, going along with the idea of film as a material thing uh, that can be studied when we talk about film studies we can also talk about the role of ideology which is to say uh, in a very simple way, the kinds of messages and themes that films disseminate into our culture and come to us from other cultures through film. I once had a professor who made the very interesting claim that entertainment is never innocent. And what he meant by that is that even the most entertaining film is making some kind of argument. It's trying to convince us to see the world in a particular way. And often what can happen is that films fall into line, either purposefully or unconsciously or subconsciously, that can fall into line with a reigning ideology. And a good example is what we live in in uh, North America, which is liberal democracy. And the films in this particular culture will either tend to support or subvert that idea of the liberal democracy, which uh, forms the status quo. And so you can support the moral and ethical causes that go along with that ideology, uh, or you can subvert it. But the point being is that a film, 
will typically have some kind of moral argument um, that uh, it wants to make and wants us to accept, wants us to uh, passively accept or maybe actively it will engage us to actively get involved in that position um, and certainly there's a lot of war propaganda movies like Transformers that do not want you to just passively accept its its feelings about what counts as liberal democracy and so forth it wants to activate a kind of protectionist uh, stance so those are two ways two definitions ways of thinking about what film studies means mm -hmm.